Welcome back. So in the last video, we were talking about uh, brain waves, brain oscillations, the electrical activity uh, of the brain on a more global level. Um, so when you have very, very large numbers of connected neurons, as in the brain, of course, you get these patterns of electrical activity which are measurable. And um, by measuring these patterns of electrical activity, electrical activity over different parts of the brain, we can learn about how the brain is organizing its activity and even the type of activity um, that it is uh, performing. Um, so let's look then at the effects of psychedelic drugs on these uh, brain oscillations and then we'll kind of think about what, what it means. So this is a study, again, Surprise, surprise. Uh, this is actually the, uh, the psychedelic research group at Imperial College London. Uh, and they looked at the effects of psilocybin on, um, on brain, brain waves. And now this is a power spectrum. I uh, showed you a power spectrum in the previous video, so go back and look at that if you, this is, doesn't make any sense to you. So we have the frequency on the x-axis, so you can, here you can see you know, all the different frequency bands basically. Uh, and then you've got the power on the, the y-axis. It's basically saying you know, how much of this particular frequency is contributing to the EEG signal. So in the blue line, uh, sorry, the red line here, uh, labeled pre, uh, so this is um, pre-drug, I guess it should say. Uh, pre-drug, so before they gave them the subject, the psilocybin, and this is post-drug, so basically during the, the, the drug experience. Now, what you'll notice is that in the, uh, we're only going to look uh, kind of in this lower region, it's the most interesting here. Um, so you'll notice that there is a, in the, um, the pre-drug, uh, the pre-drug state, this red line, you'll see that there's this spike here and then it kind of comes down. Uh, and this spike is uh, alpha, the alpha band. So this is alpha. So basically it's saying that this is, there's a, a kind of a spike in uh, alpha oscillations in the brain um, that are contributing to the, the EEG signal. Now what happens when they give them the drug. Well, when they give them the drug, you'll notice that this, this blue line here, I'm going to actually do that in blue, I don't want to uh, confuse you. Um, so this blue line, you can see it's actually falling below the, um, the red line, which means that there is actually a drop in alpha band activity. So psilocybin causes a drop in alpha oscillations. or sh let me rephrase that, it causes a drop in the power of the alpha, alpha oscillations. Now let's think about what that means. Remember that, <clears throat> um, that the, this, this power spectrum is looking at the, um, the contribution, it's, it's basically adding up all of the different signals, all the different frequencies uh, together, but it's also accounting for uh, kind of synchronization. So when, when you've got when, uh, let's say, two alpha, alpha oscillations, when alpha oscillations are in synchrony, uh, they tend to add, to get, add together and you get sort of more power in the alpha spectrum, right? And we, we looked at that in the last uh, video. However, when, when they become desynchronized, then they, they tend to interfere and sort of cancel each other out. So you get a drop uh, in uh, this particular oscillation. And that applies at all, you know, all frequencies. Um, so, so what what this, this result is kind of showing, as we would perhaps predict, uh, is that under the influence of psychedelics, because the, you get this disorganization of network activity, you get this flow of information out of these well-established, you know, well-defined networks, etc., etc., uh, it's not surprising um, that brain areas become less synchronized. You get this kind of desynchronization 
of uh, brain activity uh, as it becomes kind of more disordered and the brain moves through a, a greater number of novel states, you know, more randomly over time. Um, and so the result of that is that you get more kind of cancelling out uh, of these brain oscillations and overall you see a reduction in the power. So, so this is really just showing us in a sense kind of what we already knew. Uh, and this is seen reliably, uh, seen with, with psilocybin, it's seen with LSD and as we will see it's seen with DMT as well. Um, this kind of, uh, this, this nudge towards disorder is reflected in a drop in uh, the, in, in the, the, the power of um, alpha band frequencies, but also really, it's really a broad band uh, drop in, in power, suggesting more desynchronization of these different oscillations um, and, um, um, and more sort of cancelling out of these oscillations. So that kind of yeah, it shows us what we already know, but it's, 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 another, it's, another, um, it's another kind of piece in the puzzle. You know, it helps to um, to kind of show that, yeah, we're on the right track when we're thinking about what psychedelics are actually doing in the brain. So it, it's important work uh, that's complementary to the, uh, perhaps the more detailed work that can be done with, with, with functional MRI. Okay, um, so now let's move on to DMT itself. So as I said, um, there is little functional imaging work with, with DMT. And really, it, it, it is restricted to this kind of EEG work. Uh, but there is, there will be some functional neuroimaging, sort of MRI work that comes, comes along in the near future, hopefully. So I'm just going to show you one particular study, which is actually pretty new. I think it came out this year, actually, 2020. Again, from the Imperial College uh, Psychedelic uh, Research Group. So this is the study. Neural correlates of the DMT experience assessed with multivariate uh, EEG, <clears throat> and this was by uh, Chris Timmerman, as well as, uh, uh, and Leo Roseman, um, great guys, and um, Dave Nutt, of course, and uh, Robin Carhart-Harris heading up um, that group. Okay, so what did they find out? So a number, a number of things. So this is a slightly different way of um, looking at the data than you've seen before perhaps and we won't go into uh, a lot of detail uh, but what I want to show you um, is a number of features that you will you will that are kind of important here so this is really looking at the um, the the power uh, of brain oscillations in these various bands so we've got the delta and the theta all the way up to the uh, the gamma uh, and the changes that take place when someone is given uh, DMT. Now, I'm, I'm not going to focus on these images. I want to show you uh, one of the this image basically. So let's zoom into that um, and show you. So, so this is again. You've got two lines on this graph. Again, this is a power spectrum. So we've got frequency here. Uh, power on the y-axis, uh, and we've got two conditions. So we've got subjects given the placebo, so not given the drug, and subjects given DMT, this kind of purple line. Um, and quite clearly, you can see quite a dramatic effect here. So we're seeing um, a, uh, in, in the placebo condition, you can see there's this big spike in the, this around 10 hertz, so that's the alpha band. Um, whereas in the DMT condition at the bottom, you can see a dramatic drop in uh, alpha power. Um, so that's kind of similar or the same thing that we saw with, with psilocybin in, in, in the previous slides, uh, where you, suggesting that there's some kind of disorganization of brain activity. Uh, and again, that's kind of what we'd expect, but there's more. Now, let's have a look at some of the, the other bands. So this um, is a little bit difficult to understand at first. We need to go through this quite carefully. Uh, this one shows actually time um, on the, the x-axis. This is minutes, in fact. And you've got power again. Uh, I need to change color. You can see that. Um, so you've got power 
So basically the power of the, of the different frequencies. Um, so in other words, you know, what is the, uh, how much of the EEG signal, what is the contribution to the EEG signal of these different frequencies over time? Um, now you've also got intensity, which is on a different scale entirely uh, here. Uh, again, I need to change color. So this is the intensity. So intensity of what? Intensity of the DMT experience. So, so we start at zero, and let's have a look at you know, what's happening with the intensity. So we start at zero, the, the individual is given the drug, uh, and of, of course you get a, quite a dramatic and rapid increase in intensity, uh, which peaks at around sort of three or four minutes, again, or as we would expect with DMT, uh, and then starts to drop down again. Uh, now what we also see uh, is a drop in, so down here we can see beta and alpha bands. We see this drop, we haven't really spoken about beta, but we've certainly spoken about alpha, and we see this drop in alpha, uh, again, suggesting this, this desynchronization, uh, particularly in the alpha band. Uh, but then we see something slightly unexpected. In the delta band, um, so I've just cleared off um, some of the yellow lines, so we can just focus on the delta and theta bands. Um, so something kind of interesting happens is, whereas we saw the, um, the alpha band and the beta bands kind of just drop off with the intensity uh, and then slowly start to recover, with the, the delta band uh, you something and the theta band, you see something quite different happens. It actually, you, initially, you, you, you actually see a drop in the delta, and then it actually, it actually starts to increase um, with the intensity uh, of the, um, with the, with the intensity of the drug experience. And you're also seeing that with this green line, which is the theta band as well. So let's actually. Um, draw that out because it's it's a bit of a mess that diagram so because this is quite important so we'll we'll kind of redraw this so we've got on the x-axis we've got time uh, and then we've got power on the y-axis um, so they're given the drug at this point at time zero, and we see this uh, increase, rapid increase in the intensity of the effect, and then it starts to come down. So this is uh, intensity. Now we also see, again as predicted, um, a decrease in alpha oscillations or alpha power we should say suggesting this desynchronization of alpha oscillations and thus decrease in alpha power uh, and the same in the beta but we won't draw that now what's interesting with um, this theta and delta we'll just draw the theta um, is that you get initially you get this drop and then as the intensity increases uh, uh, you get this interesting increase which then come down comes down again so this is um, this is this that's bad isn't it should draw the oh my goodness let's draw this properly theta could have just drawn that couldn't I anyway so we're getting this increase in theta so What's kind of interesting, I think, here is that the theta, first of all, that the theta is going up, it's actually increasing, suggesting there is uh, actually increasing synchronization of theta oscillations, but it starts by going down. So it starts going in the same direction uh, as the alpha power, you know, suggesting desynchronization. Uh, but then it reaches a point uh, where it actually starts to go up. Um, now, it's likely that this corresponds, uh, in fact, it does correspond to the breakthrough phase um, of the DMT experience. Uh, so this is when, so in, in these initial early phases is this, is this kind of where the individual is, is in this sort of 
a sub breakthrough phase where they have this complex procession of, uh, of geometric imagery, um, kind of highly disorganized, uh, but then um, they kind of break through into this entirely new uh, world. Their brain starts constructing a new reality. Um, and, and that seems to correspond to the point where these theta oscillations start to, um, to increase. Mm, so this is really, really tantalizing stuff. It, it, we can't draw firm conclusions from this, but, but you know, clearly the DMT state um, possesses at least kind of two phases, right? You have this initial chaotic phase, uh, and then you have this breakthrough phase, if the dosage is sufficient, where your brain is, uh, is constructing, start, begins constructing an entirely new model of reality. Um, and, and that seems to be indicated by this, this new form of order uh, in, in this particular theta and delta band. Um, what that means has to remain something of, a, of an open question. But if we actually look at our uh, the way that we kind of look at this, so this is our usual diagram. Um, we have the consensus world, um, consensus world model constructed as we, uh, as we now know, uh, which is a state of order, right? Order dictated by these patterns of uh, activation of these cortical columns. Uh, then we go through a state of disorder. So this is a, a, the DMT state, basically, or the DMT trip, we could say. So then we go to a state of disorder which is kind of like the, the usual kind of psychedelic state. But then we pass through that into, um, I guess we should call it new order, right? Into a state of uh, new order, which is when the brain starts to construct this new model of reality. And the way that this seems to appear in this, or be reflected in the EEG, is that we, we be, the beginning of the uh, the DMT trip, the theta power goes down, and then it starts to rise um, in the breakthrough phase. So this is um, this is theta power, which seems to reflect this uh, the disorderly uh, nature of the early phase of the trip, and then this uh, new order that emerges uh, in the breakthrough phase. Oh, really cool stuff. Um, so that's enough, I think, for this video. Uh, in the next video, I want to look at one more um, kind of telling uh, and brand new experiment, uh, again, performed by the Psychedelic Research Group at Imperial College London. Um, and then that will basically be, we'll have a bit of a summary, maybe. Um, and then that will basically be, it's going to be it. Course finished. Anyway, let's not, let's not cry about that yet. Um, I'll see you in the next video. Kidding. Uh, however, if um, if you do want to support the production of future courses, or you just want to leave a tip, um, then there are virtual tip boxes below. There's PayPal, Kofi, or Kofi, whatever it is. Even a Bitcoin address. If that is your thing. Minimally, please like and subscribe. It really helps me. And please follow me on Twitter and Instagram if you use them. Alien Insect. And I think that's about it. I hope you're enjoying the course. Thank you.